So and I do want to talk more about holistic actions and what you do there. Um, but we were kind of starting to talk a little bit before we recorded about what is currently going on in veterinary medicine. And I know there are certain holistic veterinarians who have really started to try to like get this word out to people like it's bad and it's only getting worse and we have to empower ourselves and we have to take responsibility um, because we are not only losing vets um, faster than we thought. So like when the uh, pandemic crisis, a lot of older veterinarians retired prematurely. Um, we also have fewer people in vet school. And then to top all of that off, there are so many corporate takeovers of private practices. So even a lot of veterinarians, very well-meaning veterinarians, they just can't compete with it. Um, they're burnt out, they're overworked, they're underpaid. And, you know, corporate medicine takes over, which is very, as we all know, like checkbox medicine, and this is wrong, give this medicine. And, you know, it's this date, so you need this vaccine, which is insanity, but it is what it is. And it's a, it's a crisis, and it's a crisis that's only getting worse. Um, how how do you see that? Like, even in the next 10 years, what, what are your thoughts on this? What are, what do you think we're heading towards? What are we going to see? Thank you so much for asking. Nobody's ever asked that question. And I'm going to tell you what I see. From my perspective, I see the trend reversing. I see more and more people becoming veterinarians because we're able to, with the new model that that's being worked on now, we're able to keep it as a heart-based practice. And the reason I think so many vets are burning out is that we almost all go into vet medicine because we love animals, because we're heart-based. Mm -hmm. We come out after four years head-based, information-based, checklist-based, as, as you described. And yeah, the corporate, the corporate um, merry-go-round is making that even worse, and that is kind of the uh, the path that we're on right now. But it's not sustainable. You know, they're currently approving new vet schools by the, by the dozen. I think like the number of vet schools are probably going to double in the next couple of years because of that shortage. That's awesome. But uh, I don't think that's going to fix the problem until we start incorporating energy, mitochondria, into the vet school curriculum. And it is it is starting to happen, but it's just, you know, micro, micro, micro doses right now. Um, but there are a new class of pet professional that can act as a veterinary technician, that can act as a holistic pet health coach. They kind of go between, you know, the veterinary, standard veterinary work and the reality of what we can really do for our pets. Because, you know, what, what we learn when we come out of vet school is a fraction of what is available. I mean, I myself only use what I learn for diagnostic and prognostic information. I don't think any therapies that I use right now, I learn if at school. Certainly not nutrition, certainly not happiness, certainly not the power of breathing or connection or love or, you know. Anyway, that's a very tall soapbox for me. <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate that because and I appreciate at least a semi-positive outlook on it um, in that, you know, more vet schools and, and hoping to get, you know, more vet students into these vet schools. And um, I do know, I remember um, Angela Ardolino with CBD Dog Health. Um, she, she gets to speak at some of these veterinary schools, but she's, a lot of times it is like, um, group, like holistic groups of students who are asking her to come in like on their lunch breaks and things like that. But that's still really promising. Um, 
because these students can still see the value, even though it's not in their curriculum, they can take that out into the world, into their practice and continue educating themselves and, and bringing more of a holistic mindset into their practices. So yeah, that, that could be very promising. Yeah, every, every little bit definitely um, is important. There are one or two vet schools that have it in the curriculum of a more holistic paradigm, and even the energy paradigm is in one school I know of. Um, but I don't think it's in the core, core um, mm -hmm. curriculum. I think they're all electives. S mm -hmm. So, you know, my goal would be for it to be part of the core, you know, like first chair of vet school. I mean, frankly, I'm getting at high school students and pre-vet students before they go to vet school because they need that context. You know, mm -hmm. before the brains get, you know, uh, I'm not going to say it, Gabor Mate, uh, an MD said it, you know, they're brainwashed. Right. It's like, it's like we're coming out of vet school or medical school and we're joining a cult because we only can do it the way that we were taught. It's the one right way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the definition of being a holistic doc is keeping an open mind, which, and seeing the bigger how everything connects. And that's what we're learning in science is that everything is connected. That our hearts and our brains are connected to to a greater universal source of energy, spirit, and it's all it's all coming together, Jessica. I'm very optimistic. There we go. I love that. <laughs>